Well then, Phil, as a London boy, an Irish London boy, and a former Labour councillor here in the city of Edinburgh, what do you think about London and politics compared to what's happening here in, in Scotland today? Pretty much a cesspit, I would have thought, um, if you'd be looking at uh, most of Westminster, where they're basically all out their own rear ends down there. It's hard to tell the difference between any of them, particularly when you looked at Monday when Cameron had hit the the public with his vision, basically the complete annihilation of the welfare state, bankruptcy of hospitals. Um, what do you think of the Olympics? Um, oh, it's, well, it's a huge subsidy to London from Scotland and the rest of the UK. Where are we getting? Where, where is our share? Um, where is our Barnet share? Where is Wales share? Where is every other part of England's share? Uh, London does extremely well. They'll call it the cash cow. Um, this is the place that keeps everything going. Um, well, they would tell you that, wouldn't they? Because yeah, but how much of the taxes do they actually pay? Uh, I thought they were, all these big companies were legally offshore and never didn't pay much tax in any case. Well, as it's coming out now, they're finding huge amounts of these companies aren't paying. We've just been hearing about Barclays. Um, and the other dozen and a half, I think it's around 20 banks. 20 worldwide banks I've heard today, yeah. they're all being investigated for fraud. Fraud? Um, well, that's nothing new. I mean, we've been hearing that with uh, mortgage protection of fraud. Now there's the other one that was about a week ago with businesses going along to get loans to keep them afloat. Small, medium businesses, the lifeblood of the economy, if you've got them down places like Leith Walk all over the all over the country, and they'll give them the money, but then they have to get all these insurances and protections, um, and they don't really have any choice because they wouldn't give them the loans. Now, this is going to be the next one, which will probably cost billions. They think it could even be a lot more than the mortgage protection, and Lloyd's TSB, I believe, was the biggest um, in the mortgage protection. And again, they're all frauds. They're all fraudulently selling you something. They won't give you anything um, unless you get, get it. This whole kind of retail um, mirage making. Do you never wish you were a councillor in London? No, not at all. Um, Why not? Sorry, uh, I can't help it. I've been up here for 40 years, Stuart. I love going down to London to meet family and friends, but there's nothing as great as getting back on the train at the end of the week. And I've always said the best thing to come out of London is the A1. <laughs> what about um, thinking about Salmon's line today at First Minister's Questions when he said, let my people go. Does that uh, stir anything in your heart? Yeah, well it would do because all my folks come from West, South West Ireland, West Cork. Um, and I can, I can understand that, but comps, Scotland maybe has never fought because it actually joined up with, with England voluntarily, whereas Ireland was... Well, I think it was more, more carrot and less stick. Yeah, well, it was the upper classes that basically joined because they, they got caught, they'd made a, a huge mistake and they were almost bankrupt. I mean, history does keep repeating itself. Um, but Scotland as well, you see so much of the Scottish establishment, you hear it... Um, Scotland's useless, Scotland's rubbish. Scotland couldn't stand on its okay, own, I'll, I'll, couldn't tie its own shoelaces. I'll give you a new phrase I just discovered. It's called Fudmonger, and it's not rude. It's a, te it's a techie's phrase. It means fear, uncertainty, doubt. Obfuscation and lies, scaremongering. And, and, and the term is used by uh, techies to, you know, obviously, if you're spreading fear, uncertainty and, or doubt, and that would appear to be all that the unionists seem to manage. Now, can you see that? Oh yeah, well we had the classic one from Alistair Darling when he said, um, it's irrevocable, there's no going back. Well actually, um, is there any ex-colony or what, of, of the UK, or of Great Britain, um, that has ever said, please sir, can we come back? I mean, Ireland has suffered immensely since 2008. Um, with, uh, with going along like a lot of the other, with that American, British, Anglo-Saxon model that everybody else has been doing. Um, this sort of just um, free market, neolib. Well, of course not. And their standard of living is still incredibly high. 
um, compared to what they have. Higher GDP than, than, than the Yeah, they're, they're still individually richer than we are, if, yeah. if you look at that. When we were kids, it was a third world country when we used to go over there in yeah, the 50s. So I can still remember. What about the latest news this week that Jersey, the biggest of the Channel Islands, is now raising the question about taking its independence instead of being a crown dependency or a colony in yours and my language. Does that uh, strike any bells with you? you think about that? Well, I suppose because they're a target now for the smoke and mirrors of uh, high finance. They've been the facilitators of... Well, everybody seems to be having Isn't a that go with Jimmy, Jimmy Carr, Carr, but then Jeff Jimmy Manning. Carr is not a silly man. Um, he should have known. Um, he gives you that idea of being a radical, but at the other end... At, at the end of the day, and I'm sorry to be stereotyped people, but people do cut the stereotype. When people are born and brought up, public schools, millionaires and all that, they have this idea that they are something else, that, that real life doesn't affect them. What he's doing, he probably thought was fine because he still has good views, but he's just another one of these myriad of parasites at the top of the tree. Um, and politically, they're at the top of the tree as well. You've only got to look how much Blair has made they reckon around £12 million a year. Of course, today's news is that Blair wants to get back into UK politics. Of course, he's a psychopath. Of course, he's, I mean, that's it. Well, it's here's the power. a big question that's always struck me since I first got to know you, Phil, which is, you've been a member of the Labour Party ever since I met you. You've been a Labour councillor. You have argued forcibly for Scottish independence, and you've argued, argued against the Blairism, the Blairites, and the whole drift of the Labour Party. Will you ever contemplate leaving the party? Well, I'd say at the moment the party's really leaving me. I'm mentally still in the same Labour Party, you know, and then there are still plenty of people in the Labour Party. Um, if you walk away, I mean, one of the reasons that the Labour Party's like that is because people did walk away. They should have stayed and fought. Um, where, I mean, Blair and his entourage of uh, lots of them, they destroyed it. It's that the Maggie Thatcher there is no alternative. Well, of course there's an alternative. There's al always an alternative. They've just gone with the easy. Huge amounts of the last cabinet and the last government have in done nothing but enrich themselves. It's uh... So who's left inside the party? I mean, inside, the, say, the, the Labour Party that you know in Edinburgh. I'm not asking you to name names. But is there, a, is there not um, a group of Labour Party members that are pro-independence? I noticed Corston was wrote a little piece in Labour there's, Lab there's quite a lot of Labour Party members and I've no doubt there'll be councillors that have no problems with independence if that's what people um, or, or the people of Scotland want and what gets me is that if they do get independence and it's all I mean they look at all these figures they look at all these figures that come along but you can get it by default at the end of that day when you're left with no choice um, when there's nothing coming from the no campaign apart from no, 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 no. Um, and it's two years is still a long time. Lots of the, the scorched earth policies of this government, Westminster government, to hit. So but What about these principles that a lot of Labour Party people used to have on nuclear weapons, on welfare? Did Lots you, of people still have those, and at the end of the day, that's... But why, do they, why don't they stand up and say something about it? Well, there's a democratic deficit. I mean, if you listen to it, it's all about Labour Party policy is... Labour Party policy, and I don't know when it was actually... Um, when they ever had this policy, but most of the policy in the Labour Party now is usually those few at the top of the tree that decide what the policy is. Um, unions don't feed into the policy. Ordinary Labour Party members don't feed into policies at at conference or anything anymore. Everything is always stage managed. They have these focus groups, which are, well, they have these focus groups. Um, I suppose they'll come up with some focus, but then the government just chooses to ignore it. There has always been that thing of that you have a government, you have a movement. The Labour Party has always been more radical when it's in opposition. Now it's trying to get there, but you didn't hear them screaming and shouting on Monday when this horrendous um, vision, Cameron's, Cameron's vision. vision. Well, well, no, some of them will actually convince themselves that this is needed. The whole point is you're there to to to, to work for the benefit of the people of the UK as a whole, um, and there, that's everybody. Look, does we could we we probably share recognition that there's been a steady drift to the right of politics over the last thirty years on a UK level. Yes, mm. at some point, does, is there does a is there a point that comes that 
There's a break, a big breakaway faction inside the Labour Party on a UK level. Well, I think again, it's on a lifetime basis things can change. Um, I'm hoping it changes um, while I'm still breathing, while while you can see some something good. One, I mean, one of the problems we have in the UK. I believe, and that's why looking, I don't have any problems with the breakup of this entity called the United Kingdom. I mean, you see, you, you watch them, you watch these, they strut around with punching above our weight. We have our nuclear weapons. You look at, um, when you're talking about the Labour, you're looking at Jim Murphy, the shadow s secretary. Um, and he's obsessed with aircraft carriers and weapons and regiments and all that. Um, they're obsessed with running around the planet, showing how great the British are, punching above their weight, seeing what they can get their hands on like the rest of them, see what, see what they can... Uh... It's horrific. They, they, they still live in the 19th century, mentally. And I'm, I'm coming from an Irish background. I'm sorry, my, my grandmother was always a lifelong Republican. Uh, I'm not quite sure she'd get out of her grave and give me a good hiding if I didn't actually look to see the old enemy game broken yep. up. One last slightly different question. What did you think about yesterday's handshake between Martin McGuinness and her Madge? Well, I'll take the opposite tack to the papers and I hope uh, that Martin McGuinness had something to wash his hands with afterwards. Thank you very much, Phil Attridge. Thanks,